Hey guys, what's up? It's Assassin here today, and I'm going to be going through the new Mass Effect 3 Citadel DLC, which came out um, for the 5th. For most people, it's 6 here in Australia, but it goes by American time, so yeah. Anyway, the DLC costs 1200 Microsoft points, and it comes in two parts. The first part of the download, it, they still cost 1200 points, but both pieces are like a split download. Uh, just get that clear out of the way. And uh, what happens is it's 1200 Microsoft points, which is like 15 to 30 dollars depending on which country you're from. The first download section is 1.99 gigabytes, and then the second one is 2 gigabytes. Once you've downloaded it, there may be some confusion about how you unlock the mission. What you have to do is you have to complete the priority mission Citadel 2. And that one is the coop. So basically, after you do the coop mission, you find out Udine is the traitor, blah blah blah. If you don't know that is a spoiler by now, you are retarded. This game is amazing, and if you haven't got up there by now, or played any Mass Effects, you're retarded. Don't watch this video, seriously, just kill yourself. Anyway. So you go to that mission, the priority mission is after the, Ch the Tuchonko mission, where you basically cure the genophage, or you fuck up the genophage, or either or. And so you find out, do the Dina, do another mission after you've completed the priority one, so that way it registers you've done it, and then you'll come to the terminal. And on the terminal, um, you have the priority mission. Um, I had to complete a couple missions before I got here to do it, because I myself didn't realise how to actually get the mission, but then I did a bunch of investigative journalism. I googled it. <laughs> And the thing is though, for me, I actually have a lot of stuff to do on the Citadel, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight into the DLC. And yeah. Um, what comes in the DLC though is pretty much from what... Oh, I'm just going to bring up the achievements once I load, load the thing. connect. Um, but what actually is included in the Mass Effect 3 Citadel um, DLC, you get multiple combat missions, there's um, hours of story and extras, a new hub, um, you get to use squad members from Mass Effect 3 along with Erdnot Rex. I really want to play a Rex, like come on, who doesn't? And you also get a combat simulator, uh, kind of similar to the one in Mass Effect 1 I'm guessing, with the like holograms VI program which is which was actually really cool um, I hope it's kind of like a score attack perhaps so it provides like an arcade benefit to Mass Effect if you want to go purely into shooting um, all of those missions can be replayed according to the FAQ um, you get some casino style mini games and you get to reconnect reconnect with characters from other Mass Effects so basically, I've completed the priority mission on Citadel, and I want to go to my terminal now. Like I said, I have a lot of messages here. This is basically just after completing the mission, and it's all of my squad mates basically saying if they can catch up. But when you go down, you'll be able to see Priority Citadel Shirley, which is from Admiral Hackett. He's basically ordering you to come back to the Citadel, so basically get some R&R. &R. But there's a message anyway, um, so it's from Admiral Hackett. Uh, Commander Shepard, I am ordering the Normandy into dry dock on the Citadel for much needed repairs. She's seen a lot of action lately and needs a little TLC. Which is like R&R. &R. Anyway, so a small army of techs will take care of her details once you arrive. So let's get your crew out there. Out of there. You'll all, you're all on shore leave. That's an order. We need everybody at their best. One more thing. Admiral Anderson has an apartment on the wards. Head over there when you arrive. It's, I hear it's a nice place, Admiral Hackett. So basically, from here, we can go straight back to the Citadel and get the DLC underway. The mission I did though, purely just before, sorry, after doing the coop, was the fighter base in the Horsehead Nebula, which is Sarah Jessica Parker no, Nebula. Hey, get the weapon. It's a Horsehead. Ah, oh, funny. Cool. 
Also, with this DLC, there's probably going to be a lot of talking. I am going to go talk to every character. I'm not going to rush through it. It's probably going to be in lots of sections. It's like a 4 gigabyte DLC. So this is going to be probably over like 6, six installments. So... Fuck you if you want me to rush through it. I paid for this DLC, Mass Effect's a good game. And if they're talking, I'm not going to talk. So if they say something funny, I'll try and pause it or whatever. Anyway, let's get this started. sent me a message about this apartment? I want you to have it. Take it off my hands. Are you serious? You need a place that's yours. Somewhere to recharge. Clear your head. Kaylee wanted us to settle down there. Thing is, the longer I'm on Earth, the less I want to leave. And I want as few loose ends out there as possible. Like I said, you'd be doing me a favor. I like how Anderson's taking the time to talk to me about an apartment when Earth is like being swarmed. That's just my initial thought on that, but still, it's pretty funny. That's very generous. It's practical. We need you in the best shape possible. Rested. Focused. If you say so. Thank you. And make yourself at home, dammit. It's yours now. I'm sure I can manage. Okay. Good. Been meaning to do that for a while. I'll talk to you soon. Damn right you will. For Earth! Be careful out there, Anderson. You too, Shepard. I hate the fact that Mass Effect's now over. Well, after this DLC will be completely over in terms of Commander Shepard, but that's pretty sad. Anyway, let's go on to checking out this apartment. Oh my god, it's so big. Notes of Anderson's biography, Normandy. The Normandy? A brand new ship. You have received a My ship. You don't forget that moment. The first time you're standing there. The whole crew looking to you for direction. Unforgettable. I'd led men and women before that. Seen a lot of combat already. Always managed to find my way home in one piece. Do that a few times, you begin to think you know better than the next guy. Maybe you do, I don't know. But if you're lucky, really lucky, you find yourself on a good ship, in front of a good crew. A crew you can trust with your life. Gifted. Disciplined. Brave. All of them, eager to set sail into the endless black ocean. I still remember my exo asking what my orders were. Shepard, I said? Let's see what we can find. Ha! <laughs> oh. I just realized something when I was talking. I honestly hope in every, like, console from now into the future they put backwards compatibility because I want to come back for these trilogy games when I'm, like, 40 years old or older and be able to play this wonderful trilogy and just... Yeah, just... It's a great game. You never asked me about this, but my wife just called. My ex-wife. Nobody likes to talk about the toll that long months apart can have on military relationships. She wasn't military. She couldn't handle it. But it's not even about military and non-military, damn it. It's space flight. Space flight. Finding the mass relays, miracles of engineering. Human imagination rising to meet our desires. We pay a price for that curiosity, that drive. Our relationships suffer. 
People we love suffer. But that's reality. And it's worth the cost. I must have thought it was. I guess I still do. In the end, you just have to hope you made the right choices. It'd be cool to meet the voice actor for Anderson. I've always seen him in different things. He's a... Uh, after seeing him, like, well not seeing him, but hearing him play the voice actor of Anderson, it just, it's really cool. Embarrassing moment? I've got more of those than anyone will ever know. Doesn't anyone. Only way to learn something. But if I had to pick one to share, I had just gotten promoted to N7. Full of myself. King of the castle. Found myself buying drinks for undesirables in some rundown bar in the wards. They toasted my recent promotion. Hell, they would have toasted Batarian slavers if it had got them more drinks. About the time my money ran out, my new friends turned on me. I was outnumbered. Things didn't look good. My plan to get out of there involved lots of punching. Well, that worked for a while. Then a table hit me. Or I fell down. When I came to, I saw a Salarian putting the rest of the troublemakers down. A Salarian? Moved like a damn cat, I swear. When everybody was out cold. Or running. He walked over and helped me up. N7, he asked. Yes, sir, I replied. He looked over my collection of unconscious friends, nodding. Huh. Not bad, human, he said. And he walked away. I had met my first spectator. Ah. Learned an important lesson that day. No matter how good you think you are, there's always somebody quicker, faster, and a hell of a lot smarter than you just around the corner. That little lesson's kept me alive more than once since then. Now that's a little cool story. Nice. Um, I'm going to stay down the bottom here for a sec. I really don't want to answer that phone. Oh, actually, no, I'll come back there afterwards. I don't want to trigger the mission by accident. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> oh. oh, bed. Looks like I can fuck some people there. Oh, childhood. <clears throat> okay. So, tombstone data. Admiral David Edward Anderson. Not sure why anybody would be interested, but thanks for asking. Um, I was born in London. June 8th, 2137. The last of three children born to Ursula and Paul Anderson. A nurse and a flight mechanic, respectively. <sighs> but that's a little dry. And someone's gonna spice this up, right? <sighs> Never been much for the spotlight. Anyway, where was I? It was a second marriage for my parents. They were almost 50 by the time they had me. My mother worked shifts, so my father would often take me to the base. While he worked, I watched transport ships and fighters take off. Worked his whole life around space travel, my father. But he never left Earth. Not for a day. He was a good man. But that's just a side note. Don't put that in. Who is it, Kaylee? Oh, yes, I need to take that. I hope this is what you're after. I'll get to the more interesting N7 stuff next time. It's okay, Anderson. You can tell me whatever you want. Even about those bitches. I don't even know who Kaylee is. I know it's his wife, obviously. Oh, the first SR1. You asked me to talk about the SSV Normandy. The Normandy SR1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. I did. Acting CEO, Eli Zander, was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, and his team of Torian engineers were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Zander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the 
Beginning of Commander Shepard's. Well, to do a this, yes. Oh, I'm gonna have a shower. Oh, I can't get in the shower. Fuck! I'm gonna be a dirty cunt. Oh, didn't see this one. The Turians. Hm. Mm, well, I might not always see eye to eye with the politics and the individual, but I have a great respect for the Turian military. Any Alliance soldier lucky enough to take part in their training programs? will certainly be better for it. Their precision, skill, and discipline come together in a way that's second to none. Not that I'm faulting our own people or training. It's just that after fighting Torians in the first contact war, years later, I had the opportunity to observe and train on Palavan. It was a turning point for me. And I would encourage any soldier to try it. It's a unique experience to put yourself in the squad of a Turian commander. My commander was an uncompromising bastard named Bartox Oryx. If you can find him, just ask how the platoon I commanded was trounced in his strategy game. Humbly. But I've used what I learned that day many times. The xenophobes will have their say. But I think it's vital that we do more of this kind of cross-species training. There you go. And if you do find General Oryx, let me know. I owe him money. <laughs> oh, is there anything in here? Oh, there's lots of stuff. Oh. Uh, it's just a weapon bench. Uh, armor locker. Oh, well, everyone's probably seen my Iron Man up. Oh my god, it's a spa! Oh, I can't get the spa. Fuck! Why? Now oh, time to go downstairs. Yeah, downtown. Get it. No, nope, can't go there either. What's this? A few months ago, I had a chance to sit down with one of Earth's most decorated soldiers, Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today, the Admiral is on Earth leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Tonight's show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there, fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program is all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. Sounds daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Uh, that's very impressive, Admiral. Deep space survival training. Uh, that has to be... Uh, so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. But then, you seem like a strong person. I'm sorry. Is there a question in there? Uh, well, does the program make the man? Or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career sometimes more than once. When they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could, that moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. 
Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. None of which I'd like to share. But uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean, do you follow your heart over your mind? <laughs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is... War isn't orderly. And the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances. And there's more than I'd like to admit. Your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader... War tends to make examples of them. What makes a good leader, then? Mm -hmm. A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. That's a terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. But war is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Algelani. Thank you for watching. And I will always be there. No, no, it's fine. I got a few minutes. First contact war? Yeah. I was there. My first real combat. First for a lot of us. I remember one night early in the war. Strapped to my seat as our transport approached the LZ. Everyone was dead silent. Just the sound of breathing. Good man. I trained with all of them. We were always joking and horsing around, but not this time. Just the rattle of the shuttle. And that heavy breathing. Everyone was thinking the same thing. We're off to fight alien invaders. Aliens. Think about that. We all grew up wondering what was out there. If we were alone in the universe. Now we knew. We weren't alone. <laughs> I got a few smiles. Then Hendrix turned to me and said, Hell, Anderson, I heard it was a picture of you, Mama, that started this goddamn war in the first place. Scared the Torian ship. <laughs> Everyone had a good laugh. <laughs> and the boys fought great that night. Uh. Sometimes that's all it takes. A joke, a pat on the back. Just a little reminder that everything's gonna be okay. Ooh, can't pick that up. Aww. I thought I was gonna be able to pick up the ship and take it back. Catalog for what? Oh! Okay, so it's kinda like the Skyrim Hellfire. Um. Okay, I'm guessing you basically unlock stuff while you're playing this, which is pretty cool. 
customization options for your little house, hut, whatever you want to call it. Apartment. I actually feel retarded now after saying that. No one judge me or I will take your life. Oh look, the SR1. And crappy lights. Stereo. No, I've learned my lesson on that one. Not touching that again. Sure, I can talk about Commander Shepard. Big topic. There's been a lot written about the Commander. But most of it isn't true. People are quick to judge. They don't know the whole story. I don't even know the whole story. But I know the man. Worked with him. Fought with him. Trust him with my life. Shepard's had some rough patches. Who of us hasn't? He's been forced to fight a lot of battles alone. God only knows how he got out of some of that. Makes your head spin. Thing is... <coughs> I never heard a complaint. <coughs> never once got, no sir, I can't do that. He never hesitated. Few people know what Shepard's been through. I'd like to think I come pretty close. And I worry sometimes he forgets. There's a whole bunch of people who lose sleep over him getting back home. Maybe it doesn't need to be said. Maybe we're too dumb to say it. Soldiers like the Commander are rare. Men like Shepard, even more rare. Damn right, I'm a one of a kind motherfucker. Ooh, boxing bag. It's like mine. New questions. Actually, I'm just gonna have a quick look around for what ones are left. So there's new questions. There's another bathroom with nothing. Upstairs already been to. Some new questions is the last one, and then I can start actually doing the DLC properly. Okay. I have your new questions here. As a leader, do I ever feel that the end justify the means? Spirit of law over word of law. I'm not going to touch that with a ten-foot pole, but I think I know what you're after. You're referring to the way I, um, arranged to have the Normandy released to Commander Shepard before the Battle of the Citadel. I'm not sure how valuable hindsight is to the military. Obviously, it worked out for the best. Without the Normandy and Commander Shepard free to do what they needed to do, what we needed them to do, Saren might have taken the Citadel. I think it's clear what a different galaxy this would be if that had happened. I did what I had to. If I had been wrong, I would have gladly accepted the repercussions. The real trick is, never being wrong. <laughs> if you're looking for more action and less philosophy in these notes, let me know. I like how they make reference that it effect, but obviously, if you don't understand what the question for that one was, this is for you who haven't played the game, the fact that Commander Shepard has made a spectre, a spectre, sorry, <laughs> and the fact that he didn't have to really answer anyone except for this, um, the council. So basically, if he had control of Normandy, he was free to do basically whatever the fuck he wanted. So that was the whole reason why he was allowed to basically track down Sovereign, recruit a team of every like possible species, essentially, and then just beat Saren and destroy Sovereign in the first game. Yeah, so there's a little bit of history for you. Now it's time to actually start the DLC properly. Wait, unless... No, I've already seen that one. I'm guessing that's the one that I need to go to because I don't think I've been to the sushi place before. Yeah, that makes sense. In fact, too much. Oh yeah, right, because that was in the trailer. Whoops, probably, probably um, shouldn't have mentioned that one. 